Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. In this video, let's talk about a very interesting trigonometry application that has to do with weight. This is something that as a 12th grade math student or even early college student, you will see this in both math, calculus or physics. But everything I'm showing you over here is very relevant to the high school level for the high school student and excellent test preparation material. Trigonometry application weight. Before we get into the main part of this video, let's talk about these two terms, mass and weight. Mass is the amount of matter an object has. Weight is not the same as mass. It's the gravitational pull on that object. Gravitational pull along with the mass and mass. That's what we're looking at here with regards to weight versus mass. This is just the matter. That's the amount of matter you have. The amount of matter you have does not change from place to place, but your weight can change from place to place. If I supposedly am on planet Earth, my weight might be 140 pounds. We're not talking about here kilograms, we could, but I could be 140 pounds. On a different planet, which is smaller in size, let's just call that moon. And I don't know what the, the difference is between the gravity of both of these planets, Earth and its planetary satellite, the moon, but my weight over here could very well be 90 pounds. But my mass is the same in both of these planets. Let's just call them planets. My mass is the same, but my weight differs. Why does it differ? Because this Earth, planet Earth, has more of a gravitational force and pull than does the moon. When we're talking about mass, we're only talking about matter. But when we're talking about weight, we're talking about mass times gravity, mg. Weight is equal to mg. And that right there is going to be the basis of everything we'll be looking at here. When we're talking about mass, you know, you can calculate a mass of an object using a balance. You have a gravitational constant and you can do that in terms of the 9.8 meters per second square. But when you're looking at weight, it has a unit called Newtons. N, capital N, that's exactly what you need to know. Do not confuse mass, do not confuse weight. Weight includes mass, but along with the mass, it talks about the gravitational pull. What is the gravitational pull on the object? by the planet that you're standing on. Even though I might be talking a lot about physics in this video, keep in mind, in terms of science, physics is most closely related among all the scientific disciplines to math than anything else. So physics is very directly related to math. Let's look at this. We have a, a two pillars over here between which we have this plank. It's a wooden plank. The wooden plank has a certain strength. If you put something like having a weight of 100 pounds on this wooden plank, it will break. The plank will just break and your weight will fall down because that wooden plank has a certain strength, tensile strength or compressive strength. We don't have to use formal terms, but that wood, if you put too much weight on it, it falls. And we're talking about a leveled wood. It's horizontally inclined. Now take the same wooden plank and now suspend it from one side on that support and on the other side you have it on the ground now you put the same weight 100 pounds on that same wooden plank but the plank does not break and why do you think that would be the case in this case the wood cracked and the weight fell down the weight literally fell down here you haven't suspended it among two pillars you have it on one pillar on one side and on the other side it's touching the ground but the weight is being held and why would that be the case it's the same wooden plank it's the same weight and why? And we will explain that specific phenomenon right here and now in the remainder of this video and you will see it's a very interesting aspect that we're talking about here with regards to weight. It has very much to do with what you've seen here perhaps as a high school student. You have an inclined plane on which you have a certain weight. Remember, if you have a horizontal plane you put a certain weight on it, all of that weight is directed perpendicular to that and whatever the weight of this block is is exactly the weight being exerted on that plank. The minute you put an angle on and you create an inclined plane, and now everything changes with regards to what you have here originally. And everything will change here with regards to the weight. Remember I said earlier weight is equal to mass times gravity and the units are newtons. Keep in mind what you're seeing over here in terms of the weight right here is directly aimed downwards on something which is levelly positioned, horizontally positioned. When you put an incline, things will change. The vectors will change. This component that you're seeing directly down here, your weight is equal to mg, is exactly going to be right here, your mg. The amount of weight which this plank 
at an angle is now holding is going to be found along this direction. And then you have another component here which is along this direction. Why do you have two other components being generated? Because you have an angle. And when you have an angle, you're generating two components. You're having a horizontal component and you're having a vertical component. You can also think of everything here in terms of a cosine component and in terms of a sine component. The hardest for many students to understand which component is relating to which of these lines. I'm telling you directly down right here is weight is equal to mg. But this right here is going to have a certain angle to it. This is going to have a certain angle to it. And what would that angle be? You look at this line over here and you connect it across. You've created a 90 degree triangle. You see this 90 degree triangle. You see how here you have a certain, let's call that a height. And here you have a certain base. We'll call this base, that's your height. When you're looking at this triangle right here, this is now your height. When you're looking at this side over here, this side, that's your base. You have a certain hypotenuse over here, and that hypotenuse is this hypotenuse line over here. This little triangle, which is vertically inclined, I'm going to reposition it, and I'm going to make it in this direction. Now you'll see it. I've just taken this triangle and I've rotated it. This here is my base, this here is my height, here is my angle, and here is my hypotenuse. When you're looking at that, you can easily now determine what related to what. I have a certain angle over here, this base over here, in terms of that angle and in terms of this weight. We'll call this weight W. This base over here is going to be cosine theta is equal to B over W. B is equal to W cosine theta. That's B is equal to W cosine theta. For this large triangle, this height, how can we determine the height? Based on that angle, I have sine theta is equal to H opposite over hypotenuse which is W and then H is equal to W sine theta. H is equal to W sine theta and I know base is equal to W cosine theta. So let's eliminate some of this mess we have so we're clear here and we're not making things too messy. Look at this incline over here and look at this right here. They look parallel, don't they? Don't they look parallel? Well, they do to me. And look, we've already determined what H is. We've determined what B is. That's exactly what will come out right over here. For this over here, this upside down triangle, we know what B is. B is going to be W cosine theta. We know what H is. H is going to be, as I've told you, W sine theta. For this triangle and for this triangle, the designations, the height and the base formula are the same. This side right here is parallel to this long side. So this right here must be having the same formula as your H. This right here, B, is going to be very equal to what you're seeing right here over here. This right over here. And that right there is going to be your B dimension. What we'll do is we'll clarify everything over here on the side because it's getting a little messy and I want to clear it out for you. As a result of all of this, we've determined and we've seen this to develop from everything. I have an angle theta, I have a certain weight over here, W, I have something over here coming down as mg, W is equal to mg. I have this right here, which I'm going to be designating as my base. My base is always W cosine theta, W cosine theta, but W in all instances is mg, so it's mg cosine theta. I have this side right over here, which is parallel to this incline over here. And this direction over here is going to be W sine theta because it's equal to my H, W sine theta. But W in all instances is MG, MG sine theta. You have to know this, you have to know this, you have to know this. And it's developed for you. All of these will give you numerical values, which would always have these units of Newtons. Let's do a practical example and put all of this into perspective with regards to what I was saying earlier with that wooden plank being able to hold a weight or versus it being cracked under a certain weight. Let's do all of that now with a real life example. So this right here will be our practical application. We have an incline here at 30 degrees. We have a 90 degree angle. On this we have a certain weight sitting. This weight is not mass, it's a weight. Mass and gravity, having the gravity pull, the gravitational pull, it'll have 100 Newton weight. The weight of this object is 100 Newtons. The force over here is 100 Newtons. When I'm looking down straight over here, I have a 100 Newton vector being generated. When I'm looking right over here, directly perpendicular to this surface, I have this and I know now it's mg cosine theta. What's mg cosine theta? 
Well, what's my theta? It's 30 degrees. 30 cosine times mg, which is your 100. And that's giving you 86.6. 86.6 newtons. When I'm going across over here, I know it's mg sine theta. I know sine 30 is a 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times mg, which is 100, is 50. I have a 50 newtons. I have this value coming out, this value, which is your original representation, and this. Now look at how this incline over here changes everything. Remember what I was telling you about this two supports and a block holding this weight and it broke and the weight fell down? The reason why it wouldn't fall down because when you incline it, you're no longer looking at the true weight of that object. You're looking at the weight of the object which is perpendicular to the surface it's resting on. This 100 newtons is not perpendicular to that surface, but if you extend this line out upwards, you're looking at a 90 degree angle with regards to this and this weight over here represents 86.6 newtons, not 100 newtons. So when you incline a plane or a wooden plank, you can actually put more weight on it. Or that original tolerance weight is seemingly less because of the incline and the direction of the vector. The direction of the vector makes the weight less. Whereas the true weight right here is still 100 newtons, the actual weight which is being borne by that wooden plank is really 86.6 newtons, not 100. So therefore the wood would not break or it will not crack with that weight on top of it. How can you verify all of these figures are good? You can, because this 86.6 newtons refers to that. This 50 newtons over here, this surface being parallel to this surface refers to this 50 newtons right here. This 100 newtons over here, I'm erasing it and I'm putting it along the side it relates to. This hypotenuse over here, which is holding that weight, 100, is this right over here. You have a 90 degree. You can do A square plus B square is equal to C square. If you do, this is my A, that's B. You can do 50 square plus 86.6 square and it should equal to 100 square and it will. And that will verify that everything I'm telling you here with regards to the relationships, the weight relationships, they're good. 50 square plus 86.6 square and square rooted, I'm getting 99.99, which is 100. So we're good. Everything here is good. Anytime you're looking at a question which looks like this, don't ever get confused as to what relates to what. Memorize this. The direction or the vector direction in terms of the force which is parallel to your plane is always mg sine theta. Directly down from your weight is always mg. There's no sine over here, there's no cosine, it's just mg because this represents your hypotenuse of a right triangle. Directly perpendicular to the surface which is holding the weight is always mg cosine theta. You can reconstruct a 90 degree. This corner, this vertex relates to that vertex. This height over here, this height relates to that height. This base over here relates to that base. See again, this hypotenuse here, the three lines refers to that right over there and all the relationships are for you mg is for this surface mg sine theta is for this mg cosine theta is exactly for that base that you see this right here mg sine theta refers to your height mg cosine theta refers to the base of that right triangle and the mg side refers to the hypotenuse if you can remember that you should never get these type of questions wrong and that's all i wanted to present you with regards to this particular video it could be a little hard or technical or a little conceptually difficult to understand, but you can look at this once or twice and you should be able to get through this concept. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.